All right, I'm going to talk to you about transformations and different types of changes. Um, a transformation is just a very general term that means an object changes its location without changing its size or shape in anything. It's just you're changing where the object is. And so the three different types of transformations is a translation, which just means to slide, and it can be in any direction. Um, a reflection, which means to flip, and then a rotation, which means to turn. So again, a translation is when a figure is moved on a straight path. The star could be moved down, this cloud could be moved up. Again, direction does not matter. Translation means to slide. And I always kind of think of that S in translation, slide, they kind of go together. Um, a reflection is when a, ro or a figure is flipped over a line of reflection. Once this, like this smiley face here, is flipped over this line of reflection, and you have the two together, this line is, is like a line of symmetry. Um, here, you know, you have this little spray paint squiggly. Here's a line of reflection. It is flipped. It's a mirror image. It's not slid over the line. It's flipped over the line. So it's going to be a backwards version. So like this smiley face is a backwards version of this smiley face. Um, rotation is the movement of a figure around a point. And so in this particular example, we have this little Martian guy. Um, and here is the point of rotation. Notice how far away the figure is from this point. It's going to stay that far from the point. It's kind of like hands on a clock. The hands on a clock don't get closer to the center as the clock changes time and turns. The hands stay that far away from the center all the way around. So if this is the point of rotation, the figure stays that far away. Now the figure could very well be attached. The point of rotation could have been right here, and it's almost like the figure is on a swivel and it would turn it at that point. So it can be anywhere, it just can't be like in the center of it for rotation. Um, this is an example of a rotation because you can see the arrow showing you the direction and then there's the point. This is what I was just saying about the point could be on the object itself. Um, it can't be like in the middle of it, but it can be right here on the edge or it could be further away. Um, clockwise, this direction is clockwise. It's going the direction that a clock turns counterclockwise is going the opposite direction. It's going to the left. So clockwise is to the right, counterclockwise is to the left. Um, just also as a refresher, a full turn is 360 degrees. So if it's going half of a turn, it is 180 degrees. That's half of a circle. And then 90 degrees would be one-fourth of a turn. And it can go any direction. It can go counterclockwise as well. These are all just showing you in clockwise examples. Here is an example of this figure rotated 180 degrees. Uh, what I do when I do this is I pick two sides. So like I picked this side and I rotated it 80 degrees. And then I picked this side right here and rotated it 80 degrees. And then that kind of gave me a basis of where this object would be. And I, I know this isn't perfect. I'm not the best artist in the world. so, um, But you get an idea about what the picture would look like drawn with 180 degree rotation. Alright, so um, we've talked about different translations. And then in the past we've talked about line symmetry. And, the, and, and um, line of symmetry is where you could fold an object on the line and it would match back on itself. Well, rotational symmetry is where you would rotate an object and it lands on itself evenly. Um, so different objects have different rotational symmetry. I'm going to start here with this example right here. Um, this figure, you can see this green circle up top, that's going to be our starting point. That's our zero degrees. And if I turn this object, it's not matching back on itself yet. Um, I can keep going, keep going, it's still not matching. I've gone 90 degrees. See, I'm starting here at zero. I've gone 90 degrees so far. Go all the way down. And at 180 degrees, it matches on itself. That means that this object has 180 degree rotational symmetry, which means every 180 degrees, this object is going to match back on itself when I turn it. See, and again, it's still not matching back on itself. And, sorry, I'm trying to get exact, but, but you get the point. There it is. So this particular figure has 180 degree rotational symmetry. This one here, <clears throat> excuse me, again I'm going to start at zero and I turn it and turn it and turn it and it lands on itself here. Now this is a little bit, this is supposed to be a 45, kind of looks funny, but this is the 45 degree mark. So you can see I'm past the 45 degree mark. You might not know exactly where we are yet, um, but I can keep going. So it's landed on itself one time here, 
and then I keep going. There's two times, three times, four times, five times, and then all the way back to where I be began, that's six times. Well, since 360 degrees is one whole circle, I divide it by the six times that it landed on itself, and that is 60 degrees. So this object has 60 degree rotational symmetry. Every 60 degrees, there's 60, there's 120, 180, 240, 300, and 360. All right, this object here. Again, we're going to start up here at zero. I don't have the degrees labeled this time, but we're going to start here at zero. And this is going to land on itself one, two, three, oops, sorry, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you want to go all the way back where you started from, which is ten. So because this figure landed on itself ten times out of 360 degrees, 360 divided by 10 is 36, so that means every 36 degrees, so that's about 36 degrees, another 36 degrees, and so on, all the way around, okay? Um, the rectangle, again, we're starting up here at 0 degrees, I turn it, it's not matching on itself yet, it does, oops, sorry, here that's one time, and then I keep going, and it does again a second time, so 360 divided by 2 is 180. We have this shape here, a rhombus. We're going to rotate it, and it lands on itself. One and two. So 360 divided by two is 180. So this shape has rotational symmetry at um, 180 degrees. Now, this one, it's. Um, you can't generalize this and think all stars, but this particular star, all the sides aren't even. So you can see when I rotate it, see it doesn't match back on itself. If all the sides were even, it would match back up on itself there. Um, and it doesn't match up here. It's not matching up here, here, but it does match back on itself here. So this figure would have 360 degree rotational symmetry. So every object will, will match back on itself after 360 degrees. It's just a challenge to determine whether or not it does it sooner.